students and faculty. Here, join me in my passion for APA. So what are the significant and notable changes as we transition from APA 6th edition to the 7th edition? Next year. So we have here the, on your left, you have the blue uh, jacket. We have there the sixth edition of the APA publication manual. Then on the right side, you have the seventh edition of the publication manual, um, which was published in October, 2019. So what's changed? Number one, we have better guidelines for citing online media. The second, updated guidelines for inclusive and bias-free language, student-specific paper format, and a minor changes in how to cite sources. So what's new in the seventh edition? So the seventh edition is full color, easy to na navigate, then as best practices, has been thoroughly revised, updated to reflect best practices in scholarly wow. writing and publishing. It took Hello. them, yes, 10 years to revise the seventh edition. And then another new student resources is provided and then accessibility guidelines that support accessibility to, for all users including simplified reference, in-text citation, and heading formats, as well as additional font options. And then we have newer user content, dedicated chapter for new users of APA style covering paper elements and format for student writers. And then we have journal article reporting standards. New chapter in journal article reporting standards that include updates to reporting standards for quantitative research. And then there's a dedicated chapter for bias-free language guidelines. The bias-free language guidelines for writing about people with respect and inclusivity with, uh, in areas including age, disability, gender, participation in research, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and social economic status, and intersectionality. Then 100 plus reference examples. Then 40 plus new sample for tables and figures. And then ethics expanded on ethical writing and publishing practices, including how to ensure the appropriate level of citation avoid plagiarism and self-plagiarism and navigate the publication process. Now, if you may recall that there are two ways of documenting a reference sources in a research paper. In-text citation in the body of our paper and references which is the concluding part of a research paper, which lists down all the references that we have cited in the in-text citation. So in here, I think it's found in chapter eight, nine, and 10 of the seventh edition. So we have seven notable changes in the references and the in-text citation. So number one, publisher location not included. So we have an entry there. As you can see, New York has been highlighted. So in the seventh edition, the place of publication has been omitted. So we have here a check mark for the correct entry. So COVID comma SR um, 2013 period, then the title of the book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Powerful Lessons in Personal Change. So since we omitted the place of publication, we go directly to the name of the publisher. Now, in this case, the publisher is Simon and Shuster, and then we end with a period. 
Now in the in-text citation are shortened. So for three authors, so we mentioned only the first author. Now in this case, we have Taylor et al. So we omit Cutler, Johnson and Parker. Then we replace that with et al, which means and others. Then you have a period followed by a comma and then a space. Then you have the year of publication. So in the in-text citation, um, there's a minor change only. Then up to 20 authors in the reference list. Um, in the references for the seventh edition, we have to enumerate all of the 20 authors. Okay, so we have from Miller, Brown, Wilson, Evans, Kelly, Turner, Lewis. So all of the rest of the 20 author has to be written in the reference list. Number four, DOIs are formatted as CRLs. So in the sixth edition, we write DOI directly and then we have a colon followed by the numbers. Now in the seventh edition, DOIs are formatted as URLs or uniform resource locators. So we add in the HTTPS colon double backslash DOI.org, then slash. The number five, citing web pages. So um, for the sixth edition, we have this format. Then we put in retrieve from. Now this time in the seventh edition, we omit retrieve from. Then followed by the website. So we have there Walker, comma, A period, and then you close in quotation the date of publication in the web, web page, and then you end with a period, and then Germany avoids recession by growth remains weak. So this is the title of the web page taken from BBC News, then it's followed by a period, and then the website. And then the title of the, the, the article or the news has to be italicized. Then citing ebooks. So in the sixth edition, we put in the Kindle version. This is the ebook reader. But in the seventh edition, we omit the Kindle version, the reader. So we have Big M period and then 2009 period. Women in early British and Irish astronomy, stars and satellites period. And then we have the publisher followed by the website. So that's how to cite a books. Then the next one, contributors other than authors. So directors, executive producers, host of episode, instructor in webinars, person or group who uploaded a video and photographer can be included as author. Okay. Then another change, um, which is in chapter five of the seventh edition is the inclusive and bias free language updated guidelines. This is a new chapter in the seventh edition, like we have to use singular they. Now in the sixth edition, like we have here an example, researcher's career depends on how often he is cited. In the seventh edition, we use they, so thus a researcher's career depends on how often they are cited. Then another example, we use their uh, in replacement of his or her. So each examiner is submitted their assessment. Be sensitive to labels. Like before, we, we write there in the research paper, we write there like the poor. Though this time, uh, we have to be sensitive 
So we write uh, like people living in poverty. And then for transsexuals, we write transgender people. Then appropriate level of specificity. Like in the previously in the sixth edition, we write in our text in the the body of a research paper or maybe in the questionnaire over 65. But this time we have to write people ages 65 to 75. Have to be specific. Then before we may write Asian participants, this time we have to be specific, Vietnamese, Cambodian, and Thai participants, or Filipino participants, we have to be very specific. Then, in terms of paper format, we have there with the student-specific guidelines. Now this time we have um, options to choose for more fonts. Now before we used to stick on Times New Roman 12. Now this time we have several options like Arial 11, Georgia 11, Calibri, Calibri 11, Lucida Sans Unicode 10. Then no more running headings for the pages in the research paper. Then we have updated heading styles in the body of uh, the paper. We have center bold title case and then left aligned bold title case, so on and so forth. Then I have here the recommended resources. So APA publication manual comes in student's guide with the, res the respective uh, prices, hardcover, paperback, spiral bound with tabs and ebook. And then my reference source for uh, today's presentation is from the APA style seventh edition website. And also would like to thank uh, Squibber for the generosity of creating and sharing the resource, a team of 60 young people in Amsterdam who partnered with more than 500 freelance editors across the globe to help students graduate and become better academic writers. So their work is on proofreading and editing, plagiarism check, citation generator, knowledge base and educational YouTube channel. Now, So th that's their guidelines in using the presentation from Scriber. So there are two ways of documenting our reference sources in the research paper. We have in-text citation and the reference list. Now, let's take a look in the, the video on, on in-text citation. So you've been told to include in-text citations in your paper, but don't know what exactly that entails. No worries, we've got you covered. In this video, we'll go through what to include in an APA in-text citation, where to place it in a sentence, and what to do with missing information. Let's jump right in! Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. Let's start with what's an in-text citation. An in-text citation is a concise way to identify the source of certain information. It helps the readers to locate the corresponding entry in the reference list at the end of your paper. The in-text citation consists of the author's last name, the publication year, and if you're citing a specific part of a source, the page number or other locators such as a timestamp, paragraph number, or even a heading. Page numbers are not required when you're referring to the source as a whole. By the way, you can generate your in-text citations super easily with Scribber's free citation generator. Now there are two ways to integrate the in-text citation, parenthetical and narrative. For parenthetical citations, 
write the author name and the publication year within parentheses and place it at the end of the sentences, just before the period. For narrative citations, some information is incorporated in the running text. As you can see from these two examples, the year and page number are placed within the parentheses. It's either placed right after the author's name or at the end of the sentence just before the period. When your citation contains multiple authors, it can be quite confusing. Now, if your source has two authors, you use an ampersand between them, followed by the year. So here, it's Taylor ampersand Kotler comma 2018. If your source has three to five authors, then for the first citation, you list out all the authors and only use the ampersand for the final one. From the second citation onwards, you only need the first author name, followed by et al, which means and others. And if a source has six or more authors, use et al right from the first citation. Don't forget a comma. In the seventh edition, the in-text citation for works with three or more authors is shortened right from the first citation using et al. Check out this video if you're interested to see what has changed in the 7th edition. Sometimes, you just can't find all the information you need to cite a source. Luckily, there are some guidelines for this. If the author is unknown, but you know the organization that created it, for example, Scribber, then you should use the organization name. If you don't, then use the title. When using the title, format it the same way as in the reference list, so either in italics or in double quotation marks. You might also come across sources without a publication year. In that case, use ND for no date. If your source doesn't have page numbers, include a chapter or paragraph number instead. With the rules I just mentioned, dealing with in-text citations should be all smooth sailing from here. But if you ever come across an exception, just check out the article in the description. For example, when you find yourself in a situation where two authors have the same last name. Fun fact. Did you know that there are 2 million Smiths in the US alone according to the 2010 US Census? And that's it for this video. If you've learned something, give this video a like, and if you have any questions, ask away and I will reply. See you soon! Mamsan? Hello, Mom Susan, are you there? Mom please unmute your mic. She loves Alton. She loves Alton. Mom Tan? Please unmute your mic, Mom. We cannot hear you.
ระดับโอเคนะเฮลโลมาร์กเฮลโลมาร์กโอเคนะเยสครับขอดูนะครับมาโอเค so we have the following format for the reference list so we have a format here for the whole authored book so we have here um, Jackson comma L period and M period and then the year of publication so the title of the book the psychology of Pre prejudice colon from attitudes to social action second edition and then we have the place uh, the public publisher which is the american psychological association and then the web address so this is the format for the um, single uh, book for single authorship and then the next one sapolsky we have uh, the format following the 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 format or template for um, for single authorship and then We'll, you, can, you will notice that the title of the book is being italicized. And then there's no more place of publication. Rather, you go directly to the publisher. Then we have the format for parenthetical citation. And then you have also the format for narrative citation. So we have in, in the single authorship, we have to provide the author year of publication, title, and publisher of the book. Then include any edition information in parentheses after the title without italics. If the book includes a DOI, DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. Include the DOI in the reference after the publisher, publisher's name. Do not include the publisher location. If the book does not have a DOI or is an ebook from an academic research database, and the book reference after the publisher name. Do not include database information in the reference. The reference in this case is the same as for a print book. Then the next, we have the format for whole edited book. So for books um, compiled by editors. So we have there the format, just the same with single authorship. But the only difference there, you have to indicate that the book is an edited book by placing ed period in closed in parentheses, then followed by the year of publication, then just the same. You have to italicize the title of the book and then we have there the publisher. So with the next example also. Now, in the case for the in-text citation, we omit the rest of the name of the authors. We only put in the first uh, sore name and then you add et al meaning and others. Then for narrative uh, citation, we have the format um, the same with parenthetical. You add et al for and others for additional authors. Okay, so number three, We have the format for republished book with editor. So we have here Watson, comma, JB, period, then you have a comma, and then an ampersand, then you have the name of the author, Rainer, comma, then R, period, and 2013 is the year of publication. Then followed by the title of the, of the book. Then we have the Create Space Independent Publishing, which is the publisher, followed by the website. And then you have to indicate that that's an original work. The original work was published in 1920. So we have the format for parenthetical citation. So with the narrative citation. Okay, the next one. Number four, we have book published in with four word by another author. So we have this format forwarded by uh, Bio, and then the title is on death and dying, what the dying have to teach doctors, nurses, clergy and their own families. And then they indicated in close in parentheses that is uh, 50th anniversary edition. And then the publisher is Fibner, 
And then we have a note there that the original work is published in 1969. So we have the format for parenthetical citation, so with the narrative citation. So number five, several volumes of multi-volume work. So we have here multi-volume work. So Harris, K.R. Graham, S. and Ordan T. So they are the editors published in 2012. Then APA Educational Psychology Handbook comes in three volumes. So we have to indicate volumes one to three. And then that's in closed parentheses. And then you have a period and then followed by the uh, publisher, which is the American Psychological Association. Then you have the format for parenthetical citation, still with the narrative citation. Number six, uh, the next uh, format is for journal article references. So we have this uh, format. So in this case, we have um, how many authors? One, one, two, three, four, five. So we have five authors. So uh, we have to, in the, uh, for the format on journal articles, we have to enumerate there the, the five authors and then followed by the title of the journal article. So in this case, we have emotions in storybooks, a comparison of storybooks that represent ethnic and racial groups in the United States. And then the name of the journal is the Psychology of Popular Media Culture, Volume 8. They're the only ones that you have to italicize the title of the journal, so with the volume number, and then followed by the issue number, and then you have the inclusive pages, which is two, uh, 207 to uh, 217. And then you have a period, then um, you have the website. And then you don't have to end the website with a period, so that's you leave that open only. And then the format for parenthetical citation, so Grady et al. So you have a period, then followed by a comma. Then 2019 is the year of publication. Now in the narrative citation, we have Grady et al. And then you end with a period. And then close in parentheses, the year of publication. Okay, so in the format for books, the only, uh, the title is the one being italicized, while for the journals, the name of the journal is being italicized. Then journal article with an article number. So in this case, we have also several authors. Then the title of the article is teaching medicine with the help of Dr. House. Then plus one, that's the journal. And then you have to italicize the name of the journals with the volume number. And then we have to include that, uh, we have to include the article number. Then you end the article number with a period followed by the website. Okay, so the parenthetical citation format you have there, since we have several authors, you only put in the name of the author being mentioned first and followed by et al, then period and a comma, and then you have the year of publication. You then enclose that in parentheses. So for narrative citation, only the year of a publication is being put inside the parentheses. So just the same, you have to put et al to represent that we have several authors. If the journal article is an article number instead of page range, include the word article. So in this case, the, we have to include the word article and the article number. And then the article number instead of the page range. And then the next one, journal article with missing information. So we have this format. So just the same with the rest of the format. 
the only thing is uh, you have to include a notes for uh, missing volume number. Next. So at the end, we have to include their a note missing issue number. And then the next example for the article number, missing article number. Then so just the same because you have several authors, you add in et al. So with in the collection, so with in the narrative citation. If the journal does not use volume, issue, or article, or page numbers, we have to omit the missing elements from the reference. Okay. Then retracted journal articles. So what are retracted journal articles? This usually apply to uh, articles on medicine, the clinical trials. Uh, because they have uh, incurred maybe errors in the in the study, so we have here a format for retracted journal articles. So, so just the same, you have the surname of the author. So in this case, we have three authors. Again, we use et al to represent the rest of the authors. And then <clears throat> use this format to cite the retracted article itself, for example, to discuss the contents of the retracted article. You will notice that right after the DOI, you have their annotation, retraction, published 2012, personality and social psychology bulletin, volume eight, issue number 10, number 1378. So uh, this is a notation that uh, there were some errors in the, in the previous study. So first provide publication details of the original article, then provide information about the retraction in parentheses, including its year, journal, volume, issue, and page numbers. So this applies to the medical field, like in the some of the clinical trials. So next one, retraction notice for journal article. So similar to the, uh, the previous example, there is a notation for the retraction. So in this case, you will notice that it's uh, the retraction a spontaneous human adult stem cell transformation cancer found in Cancer Research Journal, volume 70, issue number 16. Then you have uh, the article number followed by the website number where you have the DOI. So you will notice that uh, there is a notation for re uh, retracted journal articles. So just the same in the parenthetic parenthetical citation, because you have several authors there. This is a collaborative study. Now we have to use et al again, and then we put in the notation for the editors of Lancet. And then the narrative citation de la Fuente et al published in 2010, you have there the editors of Lancet 2010. So use this format to cite a retraction notice in a journal article. So the next one, abstract of journal article from an abstract indexing database. So we have here uh, uh, shared authorship, authorship, meaning you have two authors in this case, Hare and O'Neill. And then the title, Effectiveness and Efficiency in Small Academic Peer Groups, a case study, and then you have the accession number, then abstract from sociological abstracts, and then you have the title of the journal, Small Group Research, Volume 30. You will notice that's being italicized, the name of the journal, so with the volume number, followed by the issue number, and then the inclusive pages, and then the web address. And then we have the format for parenthetical and narrative citation. 
although it is preferable to cite the whole article, the abstract can be cited if that is only your only available source. The abstract of the the only your only source is the journal abstract. The next one we have the format for monograph as part of journal issue. So in here you have uh, four authors, and then this um, journal issue is being published in 91, the title of which is the nomological validity of the type A personality among employed adults. And then you put in um, the notation for modern graph in brackets. And then the Journal of Applied Psychology is the title of the journal. Um, and then you have the volume number, 76, issue number, and then you have the inclusive pages site. So just the same in the parenthetical citation, we use et al, because it's more than, more than three authors. So we have the narrative citation. And then for the eighth, we have the online only supplemental material to a journal article, number eight. Then we have Freeberg, uh, TM published in 2019, close in parentheses, the supplemental material to a journal article entitled From Simple Rules of Individual Proximity, Complex and Coordinated, Coordinated Collective Movement. And then you put in in brackets that it's a supplemental material. So the name of the journal is the Journal of Comparative Psychology. 113 is the volume number and then two is the issue number followed by inclusive pages 141 to 142 and then you have the DOI, or the website. Then we have the um, parenthetic, parenthetical citation, citation for single authorship, and so with the narrative citation. Then the next one. <clears throat> so in the seventh edition provides several uh, formats for online media. So we have your format for films, DVD, Blu-ray, and streaming. So if you're citing a direct quotation from a film, you can use the timestamp in place of a page number within the end text citation. So we have here an example. This is the template director. You put it, uh, you put the name, uh, the, the designation director in close in parentheses, then followed by the year, then title of the video, then you put in close in bracket, uh, whether it's a film, then the production company. So we have an example here, Beer, comma, S is the director, um, published in 2018, and then the title of the film is Bird Box Film, uh, taken from Netflix, and then uh, production company, Chris Morgan Production, the, and Dayland Clark Productions. So that's the format for <clears throat> the references. And then down here, we have the in-text citation. So this is the parenthetical format. Then another example, Gergenheim is director of, of this uh, film entitled An Inconvenient Truth, and then you put in brackets that it is a film, then Lawrence Bender Productions, and then, and we have Participant Productions. And you will see that in the parenthetical uh, citation, uh, they indicated the running time of the film, okay? So the next one, so you have another example, so we have an example for online videos. Uh, this is where your YouTube format is, and so with your TED. And down, we have the format for the wrist. Uh, the next one, format for online videos for YouTube and TED. So we have there the template, author, year, uh, the author, username, year, month, date, title of video, website, and then the web address. 
Then down, we have another format for for films on demand. So that's the format. We have the film template. Then the next one, we have the format for tele, uh, television episodes. And then the rest, we have format for other media. For speeches, that's the format for speeches. And then we have an example for interviews also. Interviews and so with recordings. Okay, so all of the reference sources that you have cited, so we have podcast also, we have the format for podcast. And then the next one, we have the format for music recordings or musical scores. The next one, we have an example for a musical score. Okay, so, so with images. So all of the reference sources that you have cited in text, in the in-text citation, you have to put that in the reference list, which is called references, which is the concluding part of your research paper. So this is how the reference list or the references looks like. The references. Okay, so are we uh, the references? Uh, before we used to put in bibliography, but in the uh, starting in the sixth edition, we put in references. References provide the information necessary for readers to identify and retrieve each work cited in text. So what you have listed in the, what you have cited in the, the body of your paper should be uh, listed in the reference list. Now in the reference list, you have to arrange that in straight alphabetical order. Unlike before that we group all books all together, journals all together, um, electronic resources all together. But this time, it is straight alphabetical order from A to Z, regardless of what type of material is that. Okay, so we are done with uh, uh, notable changes in the seventh edition of the of the APA, and then we saw a, a what's this a film clip on the citations, and then we have presented the different formats, um, the different formats that we have to use in the sixth edition for references, and then I would like to close the with a quotation from Herbert Spencer that said that the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. So we put everything into action to meet the new normal in education. So thank you everyone and good day. Okay, that was really a helpful and informative presentation. So thank you, Ma'am Susan, for sharing the significant and important changes of APA 7th edition. Now let's, let's proceed to the question and answer. I will read the first question. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, the first question is, are, P are peer-referred international journals using this APA format, seventh edition? Majority. Majority of them. Okay, so majority of the international journals are using this APA format, 7th edition. Then another one, it's a yes. follow-up question. It's in relation to that question, Ian. 
Will all programs and discipline using the APA format be required to subscribe to the seventh edition? Uh, because there are interesting. I don't. Uh, may continue, Ma'am Susan, because there are interesting yes. differences in the in text citation, such as the usage of they to refer to singular subjects. So, likewise, in the video presented, the year of publication is located already at the end of the statement and not beside the author's family name. Although minimal changes are observed between the two editions, um, I guess the format referred by the journal where students' articles are expected to be submitted, submitted will have to be followed. So I'm Susan. Yes, so it all depends on the, the school. If they wanted to have uniformity in the presentation, Ma'am Susan, Sir Mark, we're all muted. Hello, Ma'am Indian, can you hear me? Yes, yes Ma'am. It all depends on the university. The school? But majority of which are the, uh, yes. Okay. Is there another one? <clears throat> um, yes. Uh, I would like to ask if, like, <clears throat> can you use both the sixth edition and the seventh edition? Like, for example, I already passed my uh, proposal using the sixth edition when I proceed to the, like, completing my thesis or my book. Can I use the seventh edition or both? Uh, if you wish to, you can use the seventh edition, but if you prefer to use or to retain the sixth edition of your. Um, in the citation and in the formatting, you can use the sixth edition, depending on the decision of your advisor. Okay, thank you. Another mom ending? Yes. Are there any questions from the FB? Ms. Charlene? Oh, by the way, faculty and students, uh, mom ending? Yes. Faculty and students wouldn't have to worry about this because uh, about the seventh edition because uh, APA has provided a citation uh, generator. Uh, there's a template there where they can input the the author, the title, the name of the journal, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in a worksheet, and then they submit that, and then the citation generator will have to come out with the format already. Okay. Much easier for the faculty and students to make a proper citation. Hello, Mom Sandy. Is there Here's another else, question? Mom Inding? Yeah, yes. Go ahead, Charlene. Okay, this question is from Sir Adam. Um, can we possibly acquire a copy of the document presented, your PPT and your uh, Word Miss? What's the pleasure of our director of libraries? <laughs> <laughs> okay so are we gonna no problem share the okay sure. so we, we will Susan, so we can share and then charlene i would like to remind also the the attendees that um the one that i flashed the website for apa style um it's very handy and then it's available on the web where students and faculty can consult the the website from time to time. And then if they have questions, they can just post questions there. And then the APA, APA style 
I will have to answer to their questions. Okay, ma'am. So what's your decision for uh, sending the PPT slide and the work? So are we going to send uh, it to them? Ms. Charlene? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's ma up to you, ma'am. I believe Ma'am Susan already said okay. okay so okay. we can share it. And another point regarding the question raised questions raised earlier regarding uniformity in every schools. It depends on the schools, yes. as what Ma'am Susan is saying. School, yes. And adoption yes. of sixth and seventh edition should be consistent. If you want to use six, be consistent on using six edition. Consistent, yes, ma'am. If seven, then seventh edition. The university, as of now, uses different citation styles. We have no uniform <laughs> citation styles yet. But majority are using APA. I know for engineering, they're also using another citation style. Thank you very much, Mam San. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Are there any other questions, Ms. Charlene, from FB? Because uh, here at the chat room, we do not have any more questions. I think we don't have any more questions from okay. FB. Let me check. Maybe you can proceed, ma'am. Okay. So I believe all questions were answered. So before we end, please be reminded that you can still access our online resources by logging in https colon double slash easyproxy.usa.edu.ph. Please note that always include that https colon double slash when typing the URL in the address bar so that you can be directed to the right website. So to access, just use the USC Live 20 as your username and as a password. If ever you encounter uh, this screen display when searching, kindly click the advanced button at the left button, then the proceed the search button and you will be directed to correct website. Okay, for your certificate of participation, Please answer the evaluation form. You can find the link in the chat room. Once submitted, your certificate will be emailed to you. And to stay connected with our library system or your library, please follow our social media pages. For our email, the address is libdirector at usa.edu.ph. For our website, www.library.usc.edu.ph. For Facebook, just search the University of San Carlos Library System. And lastly, our Instagram is at USC Library System. Our librarians are available to answer your queries, so just ask the librarian. And also, this is to remind you that we have another activity this afternoon. We would like to invite everyone for this afternoon at 1.30, we have the OER webinar for faculty, followed by the eBooks resource for teaching and learning at 2.30. So we be I believe we learned a lot for this morning's webinar. So thank you everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay connected. See you this afternoon. Okay, just to add, we will be sending the presentation via email together with the certificate. Thank you for joining.